What is going on guys, welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to do live face recognition using Python. So let us get right into it. All right, so the goal of this video today is to build a Python application that recognizes your face, or in my case, my face in real time. So we wanna see a camera window showing whatever the camera is seeing at the moment. And when we hold our faces into the camera, we want the system, the application to recognize that it's us. And if someone else holds their face into the camera, we want to see no match. So we wanna see a match when it's us, and we wanna see no match if it's someone else, or if there is no face. That's the basic uh, idea of this program today. And of course, then you can use that or try to use that for authentication purposes, probably not too intelligent, uh, or for some notification system that recognizes people and then triggers a notification or triggers a certain function, whatever. Uh, whatever you want to do with that is up to you, but this is what we're going to build today, a live face recognition system in Python. And for this, we're going to need two things up front. First of all, we're going to have to install two external Python packages. And second of all, you're going to need a reference image. You need an image that is basically uh, showing you that you can use to do a matching because of course you're going to get a face from the current camera image and you want to compare it to a reference image uh, and see if that's the same person. So in my case, I recorded one before the video. This is my reference image here. Uh, you can just take an image with your camera and then you can um, use the program to match yourself with that image. So I have this here stored in the same directory as my Python file with the name reference.jpg. So for the libraries, what we're going to do or for the packages, what we're going to do is we're going to open up the command line and we're going to type pip install uh, and we're going to install opencv-python and we're also going to install DeepFace. So OpenCV Python is going to be used for uh, the camera, so for interacting with the camera, processing the camera frames, uh, and DeepFace will be the machine learning model, the deep neural network behind uh, the scenes. And we're going to start in our code by importing the core Python module threading, and then we're going to also import CV2, which is OpenCV, and from DeepFace, we're going to import DeepFace in title case or Pasco case, probably. Um, so those are the imports. Now, what we wanna do first is we want to have this basic OpenCV camera structure. So we wanna define a video capture, we wanna define a camera, we want to set the, uh, the property, so we wanna set the width, the height, and then we wanna go through this endless loop until we terminate it that just gets the frame and does something with it. So what we wanna do first is we wanna define a capture object being equal to um, CV2 dot video capture. And here we need to specify the first parameter, uh, which indicates which camera you want to use. So if you only have one camera, you have to pass zero here because video capture zero picks the first camera. Um, and if you have multiple cameras, you can try zero, one, two, depending on how many cameras you have to pick uh, one of the other cameras. We're also going to provide here CV2 dot cap underscore D show. And then we're going to set the properties that I mentioned. So we're going to say cap.set cv2.cap underscore prop underscore frame width. And we're going to set this to 640. And the height is going to be set to 480. So we're going to keep it small and simple here. And then what we want to do is we want to have, in addition to that loop, we want to uh, have some um, other variables that we're going to keep track of because of course we don't want to uh, to verify the faces. We don't want to look for a match every single frame. We want to do that once in a while because if you do it all the time, first of all, matching the faces, uh, determining if there is a match or not using this neural network behind the scenes will take more than just uh, half a second. So we're going to have to uh, wait for the response and we don't want to start a new response with every single frame, especially if you have 30 to 60 frames a second, uh, you want to do it once in a while. And we're going to do that by using a counter variable. And when we have uh, a certain amount, so we're going to take this modulo 30, for example, or modulo something else. And then once in a while, we're going to uh, check this. So counter is going to be zero. Um, then we're also going to say if there is a match or not, this is going to be stored in a Boolean because this Boolean will be globally accessible and it's going to be uh, determined by something running in a separate thread, but it's also going to be used by the main thread. So we're going to define it up here. Um, and then we're going to load the reference image. So reference image is going to be equal to cv2.imread 
reference.jpg, reference.jpg, there you go. Uh, and then we can basically do our uh, main loop. So we're going to say while true, uh, we're going to get the return value uh, and a frame from camera read. So capture dot read this returns two items, the return value. So we use the return value to determine if there is something if it did return something. And we use the frame to get the actual frame that it returned if there is a return value. So what we do is we say if there is a return value, uh, do something. So we're going to just pass here. And what we want to do it every uh, with every iteration is we want to get a key. So we want to say cv2 dot wait key. Uh, one to get basically um, to be able to process user input. So if I press a key, it should be recognized. And if this key that I press is equal to the ordinal of Q, so if I press Q, basically, uh, then we're going to break out of the loop. And when we're out of the loop, we want to say CV to destroy all windows. That's the basic structure and all the magic is going to be happening here inside of this if return value exists block. And what we want to do here is, first of all, let's just go ahead and display the result. So or not the result, but the actual image. So CB2 dot, uh, or actually it doesn't make sense. Since I'm recording, I'm not going to be able to access the camera. So I'm going to have to write the full code. And then once we're done, I'm going to have to turn off this camera that I'm recording with right now to be able to use it in Python. So it doesn't make sense to to do any steps in between here. So let's go into the actual code directly. Let's say um, the counter has to be and now we can choose a number that works for you. Let's go with 30. Every 30 iterations, we're going to do the following thing. So if modulo 30 equals zero, um, we're going to do the following thing, we're going to try to start a new thread that is going to run a specific function, which is going to compare the frame that we have from the camera with the reference image. So we're going to say threading dot threat the target function will be something that we don't specify yet, uh, that we don't have yet. So I'm going to I'm not sure if I can do pass, let me just define the function without writing any of the code. So I'm going to say here, uh, the function will be called check face, and it's going to take a frame as a parameter, I'm going to pass for now. Uh, so this function check face will be ran in a new will be run in a new uh, thread. So we're going to say, check face is the target, the arguments are going to be the frame. So I'm going to pass uh, to that function, a copy of the current frame. Now, what's important here with the arguments is, since we're passing a tuple, the arguments is always a tuple here. So what we want to do is we want to add a comma, even though we don't have a second argument here, we need to add a comma, otherwise, it's just going to be one element. Uh, surrounded by parentheses, Python is not going to turn this into a tuple, but arcs is a tuple. So we need to pass it as a tuple uh, by adding this comma here. So we have the arguments. Uh, and then we want to just start this thread. So we define the thread, we start it, and this is our try block. If for some reason, this does not work. So if we get a value error, which we're going to get quite often, because it's not going to recognize a face. The problem with deep face is that um, when it does not recognize a face, it doesn't just tell you that it doesn't recognize a face and it returns a no match, it tells you uh, it doesn't tell you anything, it just uh, throws a value error. So if it doesn't recognize a face in an image, it tells you value error, and you're not going to be able to do anything. So we're going to catch that. And we're going to just pass if it doesn't recognize a face, it doesn't recognize a face, we don't care. It's just not a match. We're going to also say counter plus equals one. Um, every time, if there is a return value, and then we're going to do the following. Uh, the face match boolean that we define up here will be changed by that function depending on whether there is a match or not. So we're going to assume that the work here has already been done properly, we already, uh, we already checked the face, so we already have the comparison and the result. So what we want to do here is we want to say if there is a face match, uh, we want to put a text onto the image. So we want to say put text onto the frame, and the text is going to be match. And we're going to pass here. Now I'm not sure what the actual Oh, it's displayed here. So first, we're going to say 2450 to define the position, then we're going to define the font, which is going to be cv2 font underscore Hershey uh, simplex. Then the scale of the font is going to be two, the color is going to be red, because we have no match. So we're going to say, um, 
or actually, no, sorry, this is match. So it's going to be green. So it's going to be the center value. It's going to be RGB. Or actually in CV2, it's BGR. So blue, green, red, which means 0, 255, 0 is going to be green. So we have 255 for the green value, 0 and 0 for red and blue. Um, and then we're going to, I don't know actually what the last parameter was. Does it show that in the function signature? It was the thickness. There you go. The thickness is going to be 3. So this is what we specify here. Uh, otherwise, if that's not the case, we're going to copy that. We're going to paste it down below. We're going to change this to no match. And we're going to change the color to 00255. Remember, BGR, not RGB. So the R is here. We set red to 255, uh, meaning we're adding this red text. And of course, every time we want to also show the results. So CV2 im show whatever we have on this frame. So the camera image and our detection or not. Um, and of course, we need to provide a title. So let's just call this video. And this shows the result. Now everything is done uh, other than the actual checking. So the actual machine learning here, uh, which is going to be done with deep face. So what we want to do here is first of all, I want to say that uh, face match is a global variable, or a global object. And we want to say try to do something. If it fails, if we get a value error here, again, we're going to just pass. And here, what we're going to try is we're going to say, if deep face dot verify, and we're going to verify um, the current frame that was passed and a copy of the reference image. Uh, the reason I pass a copy is I'm not sure if that's even necessary. But I think if we don't pass a copy, we're actually using the object. And I'm not sure if it could lead to some um, locking situation for the respective threats because we run a new thread every time. So maybe if the actual object is being used, we're going to have some problems. I'm not sure if that's the case, but just for safety, uh, I use frame copy and I use reference image copy. And then what we want to get here is actually the verified because the verified is going to be either true or false. It's going to be... Um, uh, it's going to be either true or false. And if it's true, we're just going to set face match equal to true. And otherwise, actually, why is that a problem? Image path to unfilled. Oh, why did I pass a list here? This is how you do it without uh, the square brackets. So the face match is going to be true. Otherwise, it's going to be false. And that should actually be all of the implementation. So let's go, go through the uh, code quickly. Again, we define a camera object, we set the proportions, the dimensions, uh, we initialize the counter being zero, we um, set face match equal to false, we load the reference image, we have this function that verifies that checks if the reference image and the current frame have the same face on them. Um, and this happens before we put some text onto it. So we get the frame here from the camera without having any text on it. We put a copy of the frame. Uh, we, we pass a copy of the frame to the check face function. Um, we get the result. Depending on the result, we say there is a match. There is no match. This changes this variable here. And here what we do is we say, okay, if there is a match, we write in green uh, color match onto the image and otherwise in red color no match. That's basically the idea. Now I'm going to turn off this camera and we're going to look if this works. Now before we move on, I found two little mistakes. First of all, I have a typo here. It's verified, not verified. Uh, and also we need to set face match equal to false um, in the case of an exception, because obviously, if it doesn't recognize a face, we should also set face match to false. Otherwise, it's only going to be false if we see a face that's a valid face, but it's not us. So we're going to set face match equal to false. All right, now here we are, I'm holding something into the camera to prevent it from seeing my face, I had to start the application before I could start OBS because otherwise it would recognize my camera. Uh, but this is now the program running, you can see no match because um, there is no face to detect. And now if I remove this, we can see if it can recognize my face as the face in the reference image. So there you go. There you go. We have a match. Um, if I move into the camera, we have a match. Probably if I turn around enough, we have no match anymore. If I then look into the camera again, we have a match. If I put this in front of my face, we have no match. So this works. And I also tried it actually with someone else. So I put them in front of the camera and it said no match because it was not my face. 
But of course, if I have someone who looks very similar to me, maybe some uh, lookalike, maybe some brother or something, even though I don't have a brother, uh, but this would probably not work perfectly. So you could definitely uh, fool this system into believing that it's you. And of course, you can just hold an image of another person into the camera and would not detect that it's not that person, but just an image because this is not something that goes into your biology. This is just, just an image detection. But it seems to work quite well. Um, of course, if I, again, if I move around uh, or not around, if I move away, maybe it's not going to recognize me anymore. But essentially, this works most of the time. So this is how you build a live face recognition system in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.